Hello everybody, welcome back to the Taurus route and um, I'm just going to go quickly through um, uh, planetary influences on mental health and you know to start with just thinking about the idea of planetary conditions and the idea that um, you know planets are sort of the animators of our being and the, the signs sort of act as filters um, to how those planetary energies are being expressed and so that's going to sort of define whether we have healthy relationships with each of these planets and then it's um, you know that's part of what's going to define whether we have healthy relationships with these planets there's a lot of personal development over time and where the angular relationships between everything is and the whole of the chart to be included but just to remember that these planets are sort of the animators and the, the key keys to understanding all health and well-being, but um, specifically mental health here. So the moon represents our emotional state, our inner comfort, and our sense of being nurtured. Um, and the moon and Mercury are going to be kind of the, the original keys in looking at mental health, like from a chart standpoint. Uh, the moon's going to relate more towards mental health as it relates to depression, um, and emotional issues, and Mercury is going to have to do with mental health, with more of the cognitive um, aspect of it, and um, sort of general definition of sanity or not will come from Mercury. Uh, and so those are sort of two very different kinds of mental health, and uh, I'm no mental health expert, and I'm sure that can be divided into many, many other sort of categories as far as you want to divide into categories. But for the uh, purposes of astrology, we'll keep it confined to um, how these planets are genuinely, genuinely influencing us. And this is why astrology is such a beautiful thing, because it's the science of it's how it's happening. Um, not just a theoretical breakdown into infinite categories, but these are actual categories that are actually influencing us. So... With the moon and the emotional state, the inner comfort, and the sense of being nurtured, like that's huge as far as mental health goes. Like, if we are not um, in an emotionally comfortable place, agitation is just far more frequent, and the more agitation, um, you know, unsettled, un just not feeling um, safe or nurtured is uh, not going to help. Your, your mental health overall. Um, Mercury, uh, the information streams is huge, and I think everybody right now suffers from that. And too many information streams and not enough of them being very accurate to reality. Uh, and, you know, then it's going to be recognition of pattern and interpretation based upon these information streams. And if our information streams are uh, sort of dirty, as it were, polluted, uh, it's gonna be very difficult to recognize patterns of any value and, uh, and it, it just becomes impossible to interpret it in a, a healthy, coherent way, which is what's important for mental health. And Mercury, coherency is important for Mercury's health. And uh, so, yeah, who's teaching you and how and why and who's informing you and how and why and your ability to sort of weed through the information yourself rather than having somebody else um, sort of do all the interpreting for you, which is what most people are sort of stuck in a trap of. They have a, a, a TV, a news site or a, a website or an individual um, that they, they've sort of come to trust and it becomes this sort of thing of faith in your interpreter of information and um, it shouldn't really be about faith. Mer Ideally, your own Mercury is very confident and competent in discerning the truth between the lines of all the information rather than trusting somebody to take all of the world's information and um, digest it and spit it out in a... Um, you know, X, Y, Z for dummy is kind of a format so that we can all feel like we understand it. So this is a huge one. These two are huge for mental health. 
And now we'll kind of go through and see how the rest of these planets influence kind of both of these, but mental health in general. So the sun represents our, our confidence and our optimism, our creative expression and our overall vitality. So you can see how if, if you don't have confidence and optimism, it gets pretty easy to start getting more depressed and that's going to influence your mental health negatively. With Venus, we have values, attractions, and our senses of beauty and harmony. And you can see if we, if our values are um, very materialistic and um, very sort of temporal and without um, much spiritual um, substance, the, the the value is so short, and it's just it's it's a chasing the dragon kind of a situation a little bit. Um, and so that's definitely going to affect our mental health. Um, what we're attracted to and like our senses of beauty and harmony. Like if we, we have a difficult time finding beauty or harmony in the world, that's gonna affect our mental health. Again, that's gonna relate to the moon and our emotional state um, very directly. Mars, our assertiveness, our drive to survive and sense of competition. Um, you know, these are very important to the overall being of us, that's a, that's a part of us, to, to be in competition, to be assertive. And if we are always allowing other people to be assertive in front of us and just always sort of letting other people have their way, um, that's going to again affect our mood. Um, and all, they're so interconnected, the moon and Mercury, your emotional state brings on sort of a um, lack of confidence in your ability to. Um, read the world. It's just the lack of confidence is huge. Um, so with Jupiter, we've got expansion, philosophy, integration, and higher truths. And so if we have a very closed-minded opinion about the world, and maybe we see through the lens of a singular um, uh, political party, or religion, or whatever it is that, that um, is sort of rigid about the way we see the world, if we're unwilling to sort of expand out of that, um, yeah, our information is going to be stunted, we're going to be very limited in the streams of information that we intake, and that's going to affect our ability to discern truth in the world, and that will, again, affect our mental health. Um, yeah, with, without expansion, it's, it's difficult to develop philosophy and to integrate other ideas because you're sort of rejecting higher other ideas, which makes it pretty difficult to find higher truths than the one you begin with. Um, Saturn is sort of the next real big one in mental health. Uh, so Saturn represents discipline and integrity and structure and groundedness. And, you know, if we're not, if we don't have discipline and um, we don't feel good about our sense of integrity and um, all the ways we've had to sort of sell out in order to just stay alive in this world. And sometimes we sell out just for um, simple pleasure and not for any very good reason at all. And if we lack structure and groundedness in our life, um, it's difficult for, again, the mind wants to be confident about where it's at and the mind doesn't want to feel like it's um, it's poor of character and so maintaining quality character especially in a world where there's so many examples of people displaying poor of character and kind of getting rewarded for it um, it's, it's hard to hold your discipline to your moral grounding and this is moral grounding is a huge part of this um, but also without discipline it's hard to do the work necessary to build up a, a quote-unquote safety nest, um, whether it means you've, you've, um, you know, you're financially stable and able to sort of, um, yeah, live your life without too much worry of providing for yourself. You know, if you're, if you're unable to provide for yourself because you're disciplined in your hard work and you haven't been grounded enough for the plan and structured enough, um, to, you know, see that plan through, it's going to be difficult to be um, centered mentally and emotionally uh, because you're always 
struggling just for survival. We get out to some of these outer planets beyond Chiron. Um, a lot of these are sort of more advanced a little bit, and I think a lot of people have a lot of work to do here and before they even kind of get to some of these extra levels of mental health. And, and this is sort of how mental health can um, infinitely become healthier. Like, I don't think there's any end in, um, our, at least right now, I think um, humanity's mental health is struggling. Um, and I think we there's there's lots of room for growth there, and I think this is where all that growth is. So Chiron being related, it's considered the the wounded healer is the archetype sort of of Chiron, and relates to intuitive healing and the ability to learn through suffering. And so it's pretty much inevitable that at some point in some phase of our life we're going to go through some mental health issues however big or small, however long or short of a duration it is, um, it, by progression, by transit, if not by a natal birth chart, um, people will experience their own version of a mental health issue. Now, if we can take that experience and learn how to like make it a strength and really grow and develop through it and see it as a blessing, and then go to share that, like um, this idea of intuitive healing. It's you, you learn that process with your inside of yourself, and then you can sort of hopefully develop that into a tool that you can help other people with, and help other people discover where their wounds are, and um, your experience of having learned and overcome, and being on sort of the other side of your suffering um, is inspirational to other people, and. Uh, makes you far more effective at um, doing that. But again, if you're not able to do this, you're sort of stuck in sort of the mental health issues of the moon and Mercury. Um, Uranus relates to our inventiveness, our originality, and our humanitarianism. And that humanitarianism is kind of key as far as this being sort of a next level, but this is where you really, the part of you that really is comfortable straying away from the pack and, and figuring out who you really are and what your ideas really are. And that takes confidence in your mental health and your emotional health to detach far enough from the, the group. Um, and, and yeah, and just be comfortable that you can come back or go. And that's, that's something that's really healthy for people to be able to get to that place where they're, they're strong enough of mind that they can they can entertain just about any idea and not worry that they're gonna get lost in some cult or something like that. Like, it's important to be able to discover new ideas and to have new original ideas that you're willing to like genuinely consider, even though you've never heard anybody sort of think that way before. Um, with Neptune in the realm of dreams and intuitive vision and our sense of holistic unity and you know, these are dreams of kind of a higher level of beyond um, material dreams. And this idea of intuitive vision, it's, it's, um, uh, it's sort of connecting the soul to, to a larger purpose in life and having this sort of sense of holistic unity. All of that is really, really beneficial for your mental health. Um, yeah, in, in ways that sort of don't really need to be explained. There's a reason why um, humanity has sort of developed all these religions over time to sort of, I don't know, codify, I guess, this, this holistic unity. Um, and then Pluto is this idea of regeneration through psychological release or, you know, ego death would be a way to sum that up. And I think that's really key um, for everybody at every level on a somewhat regular basis. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, holding on to ideas and thoughts and ways of looking at the world that aren't in tune with nature is really bad for your mental health and people do it all the time. And I think politics is a huge reason why a lot of people have their sort of, you know, they plant their feet in the ground and 
I'm like this, I, I, um, I have these values. And there's this whole party to sort of like back you up to say that those are good, healthy values to have. And the, the other side is horrible for not sharing in those values. But a lot of times those values are really pretty superficial and there's a, a lot more to the issue than just that perspective. That's just one example of how people can grow through this psychological release from ideologies that aren't really serving themselves or humanity very well in the long run. Um, so again, you know, to take all of these planetary archetypes and, you know, then you apply that to looking at charts and seeing, you know, the idea of dignities and um, detriments and strengths of positions of planets based on their energetics and um, angular relationships and houses that they're in is going to determine the sort of the natal um, strength or weakness or struggles or um, strengths of any of these particular planetary archetypes but they can all be developed once they're recognized and so when you start recognizing where maybe you don't have you know, like with Venus, we can, a lot of us can relate to a lot of those things, um, how we have values that we know aren't, aren't very mature, aren't very good for us in the long run, they're very superficial, and we spend maybe um, an unhealthy amount of time um, indulged in those values, and we could be doing other things with our time more Saturn-like things. Saturn and Venus are very opposite. And sometimes we, uh, we spend too much time in a superficial Venus environment and not enough time in a, um, a Saturn, more eternal vision of life department of thinking about the, the long haul of life and not just immediate gratification. I think that's a, a pretty big key for a lot of people's mental health and uh, you know, the Saturn one is about personal responsibility. And I think another big part of healing is sort of accepting that this is the way we were designed and that it's really up to us to develop these archetypes in a healthy way. And um, that, that it really does boil down to personal responsibility for taking care of our mental health. And as hard and difficult as that is to um, sort of accept, I, I think everybody who's sort of come out the other side can, you know, um, point to lots of ways in which they were helped by other people and um, other ideas and whatnot. But I think they'll also admit that they had to make changes in their life and they had to take responsibility for certain things um, in order to get better. And I think once you realize that you're not a victim necessarily of anything, you're just a human being struggling like every other human being either has or will to some degree, um, I think it's easier to accept that this is a, you know, it's a Chiron sort of a situation. It's this um, wounded, part of you that through transformation has this ability to become a healer um, based on your um, all too sort of familiar experience with that whatever form of suffering that you might be going through has so much value once you learn how to um, sort of balance out or create proportion sort of between the way all of these energies are allowed to flow through you because they all want to and they all have a very um, important role for your holistic development and the, the, the more you sort of pay attention to these things um, yeah I think the sooner you're going to get closer to the truth of what's going on which again is going to help your mercury deal with reality as it is and not as you may have read it on a website or one teacher once said or however it is you're learning to trust your information. Um, astrology is older than probably any other source of information that most people are getting and if you're paying attention to it, 
it's still clearly accurate information. So I highly recommend um, broadening your astrological studies. If, um, if you're watching this video as it relates to uh, mental health and astrology, I think you're already sort of open to that and I would just encourage you to continue those studies. Uh, yeah, thank you everybody very much for watching and uh, I, I bid you very well, take care.